functions are an awesome way to structure your plugin and I think you will fall in love with them really fast. Without knowing it, you already used functions. Um, if you think back to our Hello World example, for example, then remember how you called this gma.feedback and then passed in the text that you wanted to output it, right? Well, you guessed it, that was a function. Functions in Lua are essentially bundles of code. And these bundles of code can take zero or more parameters. Values that you pass into a function that the bundle of code will work with. That's parameters in a sense. Once the function execution is done, it will return zero or more values. Yes, you heard that right. In Lua, you can actually return multiple values from a function. But enough with this theoretical stuff. Uh, let's take a look at a few examples. First, let's put our hello world into a separate function. And in this case, this function has zero parameters and returns zero values, as we can see here. So in that case, um, up here is sort of this um, opening and closing bracket that we already saw in our main function earlier. And then we don't see the keyword return here. That means no parameters, no return values. We can now call this function by writing down the name of the function followed by two round brackets. And the two round brackets is where your parameters go. So in our case, since we don't have any parameters, they're actually empty. All right, let me just show you how that works. Um, so in general, we can create a main function down here as we always like to do. This, by the way, is not mandatory. You can call this whatever you like, but for now, um, I just want to sort of always use main because it's a good convention to always know where to look to kind of get an idea of what a plugin actually does. So in this case, function main, it returns the main function. And now in order to call this, we are just going to write down hello world. And then without any spaces, opening bracket, closing bracket, and that calls the function. Make sure you write the function name exactly as you defined it, including the function name, but also um, the lower and uppercase letters in that function name. And you have to really write it exactly the way you built it. So if we take a look at our hello world function up here, we can see that it's all lowercase letters except for the world up here, right? And also this is fine. Like we can leave a white space to kind of make this easier to read, but we cannot, um, you know, leave out the white space down here. And we can see we have to write it exactly the way it is defined here. Okay. Now, more useful examples of this type of function includes a function, for example, that this place is super cool welcome message. Um, or for example, if you have a function that resets show variables to certain values, for example, to make sure that subsequent when steps of the plugins I will always start out from the same place. Um, and essentially, yeah, I mean, I guess it's all pretty self-explanatory. I'm just going to take you over here and I still want to execute this code. So just go functions. Okay. Um, so right now, as you can guess, you know, we currently only run, um, you know, the hello world function. Now, if we actually go back here and let's say we comment this one out and, um, you know, we want to output the welcome message, then um, let's take a look. Output welcome message. By the way, what you can also do is just double click it, then, um, you know, go control C to copy it and then go control V and then add the brackets behind it. Control A and Control C to um, to select our code, Alt Tab to go over, and then Control A and Control V to insert the code into the show file. And then, ooh, take a look. Isn't that awesome? Um, I think that's pretty cool. All right, let me horizontal. There we go. Ooh, take a look, people. I think the last line. Uh, no, it's all right. It's all right. It's actually pretty good. Yeah. So that's the kind of stuff you can also do with functions. Um, <laughs> so uh, a link to create your own 3D text art and, um, you know, and instructions on how to actually make it compatible with Lua. Um, you can find it all in the functions 
example file. <laughs> All right. Next, next, let's take a look at functions that actually do take parameters. And one of my favorite examples is something which I like to use quite a bit. It's a simple print function that outputs both to the command line and the system monitor. Because like that, I can be always sure that my plugins output is seen by the user even when I forget to open up a system monitor. So that's something that might be useful, especially if you distribute your plugins to family and friends. I mean, still waiting for that one family out there that is actually a family of lighting, I mean, MA2 operators, I don't know. If you're part of a family like that, let me know. That'd be pretty sweet. So in that case, um, yeah, let's um, let's just use that actually. So what's different in this echo function that we're building um, now is that it has parameters. And in this case, we called it message, right? Um, and this message parameter is passed into the feedback and the echo function, as we can see here. So this is where we sort of define that, um, you know, the first, parameter is called message and whenever we refer to the value message that actually gets inserted into these functions. I hope that makes sense. I think it's pretty straightforward. So just like that, whatever value we pass into the print function is sent to both the feedback and the echo. All right. So I want you to show that one as well. Let's see. Hello, both worlds. Um, control A to select, Control C to copy, Alt tap to go over, right click on the plugin tile, Control A, Control V, and then save, and then I'm going to run this. And now you can see that it's both being output to the command line feedback and the system monitor, which is incredibly useful. So that's sort of a function that does take a single parameter, doesn't return anything, but it takes a parameter and then does something with it. All right, back to the script. The second example you can see here is one that selects an executor based on the executor number. This is incredibly helpful when you're counting up executors on a page or want to perform some action on all of these executors. So, um, you know, essentially you pass in a page number and an executor number. Let's just test this puppy out. So I'm going to comment out this print function. Again, it's a bad idea to comment out code. You should never leave commented out code in there for too long. For now, it's fine though to quickly sort of show you the different um, ways that you can use these functions. And I'm going to leave them in there just so that you can actually recreate this example. So select exec, and then I'm just going to go one and then 10. Control A and Control C, Alt tap, right click, Control A, Control V, save. Boom, that's how fast you can actually, uh, you know, run um, your code into MA2. All right, this is obviously a bullshit command. Um, boy, oh boy, Jonas, what the hell? Select executor. All right, Command A, Command C, Alt tap, right click, Command A, Command V, bam. That's gonna be you in just a little while. So now we can see, select executor 1.10. And this was actually our first example of how to create commands from sort of the user input. By the way, we will see in the chapter on dealing with text or what nerds call strings, um, what these two dots are all about that we used here to actually uh, combine these different parts of the command. All right. Lastly, let's take a look at an example where we actually return something from a function. And in this case, again, I have to go to an old file and get the stupid example out of there. So let me just um, take this example. Jesus, Jonas, get your code together. Ugh. All right. Um, now that I have the code in here, um, <laughs> in this case, we are going to use a very generic example just to keep it simple for now. So if you ever wanted to build a calculator based on your MA2 lighting console, now you can. Just what you needed, right? A calculator, uh, you know, of the price of a new BMW. <laughs> yeah, that's a great investment. Seriously. Um, I mean, it's a stupid example of how you can return values from your function. 
Um, we're seeing here a pretty simple addition, and of course that's not um, too valuable. Um, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, you don't want to put every little stupid thing into a function. Only when you use that kind of stuff in multiple places and it really makes sense to sort of, um, you know, take it out. So, what we can still see here though is that we have two parameters, parameter A and parameter B, and then um, what we do is we actually um, add those two and then all we have to do to get the value back to whatever piece of code called this function is to use return keyword. And um, in this case, it returns the addition as we can see, right? What's important to know here is that the return keyword not only returns a value, but also ends the execution of that function. This knowledge might come in handy later. And as I said in the beginning of the segment functions in Lua, can even return multiple values, but we won't cover that. All that's left to say or to do now is to actually take this function. Actually, let me copy this. And then um, what I want to do now is actually use it. So I'm going to go sum equals add one and four. And now we can um, sort of yeah, I don't know. Let's just use this little trick here. Uh, I don't know. Let's go print. And then this sum is sum. All right. And then it's five. Who to thought? Who to thought? Man. All right. So that's, in a nutshell, that's, um, you know, a quick overview of functions. Rule of thumb, break down your plugin into as many different functions that every function either answers one question or performs one task, and then you can be sure that your plugin is very nicely structured. And a second good rule of thumb is the dry rule. Don't repeat yourself, so if you find that you do certain operations, um, you know, different parts of your plugin, it might be worth to consider writing a function for it. And also keep in mind, if you get stuck, if you get weird errors with functions, come back here, um, just, just copy and paste some of the example code into your plugin, uh, play around with it a little bit to see if that maybe helps. And if you're still stuck, then just go on and Google, um, you know, there's a ton of good Q&A out there about Lua. All right, but that's functions for you.